right, hello everyone. I'm Professor Caudill. Today we're going to pick up where we left off on number 73. So we have a shooter. Pulls a shot. Okay, so it's probably a bow. Okay, she's shooting it vertically. So initial velocity is 11. So it's asking for T. Y naught is zero. Uh, we have the force of gravity. So he's asking, how long does it take? How long a time does he have to get out of the way? Shot was released at 220. So why not is 2.2 meters. Okay, so Y is going to be 1.8 meters. It's our final. So basically this is our end point and this is our beginning point. So how, what's the time for this? So we're going to choose a function. So I'm looking at solving for T. So we'll probably use equation four. And we're gonna get two values and probably use the positive value since we're talking about time. Okay, so this is, uh, don't get confused. The X's are Y's in this scenario. It just depends on how the uh, coordinate system is, uh, is oriented. So we're gonna, Equation four, displacement, that's our final value, that's our 1.8. And negative nine, we have gravity, and then time, that's T, that's where that's what our answer is going to be. Initial velocity is eleven. Initial position is two point two. So I'm getting two point point three seconds. To get out of the way. Um, I'm thinking it would be longer than that. So maybe we can get a second opinion from the chat bot. So we're looking for 2.3 seconds. We don't really care what method it uses. So it's getting, obviously it's a lot of math they're doing, and it... okay. Okay, so let's match everything up. So 1.8 is Y, that's correct. 2.2 .2 is Y naught. V naught times T, okay. And 9.8, that's a negative 9.8. Okay, so it looks like this is, this matches with us. This, we don't need to worry about. This is, this, is everything, all of this happens in the calculator.
So we want to know why it's getting 0.5. So two, okay, it's four point five seconds. That's that's a little. I mean, that's double what we got, but it's still pretty close. So I think it just comes down to probably how they they calculated it. Um, sometimes it just messes up. So. Like what's what's going on here? Eleven squared, and then it just disappears. And then it pulls it out. So, like, it's I want I would trust our calculation more than than the language model, but it was. It was close. So let's do another problem. Let's throw a ball straight up with initial velocity of 15 passes a branch. The ball's going straight up. Passes a branch at seven meters. Okay, so basically we want to know ball is going to do a parabola-like figure, so it's it wants us to find this displacement. It wants us to find So we want to take this total time, and we want to subtract it by the time it get, takes just, just to get up there. So we're going to say T not. Okay, so we know gravity is 9.8. Why not is zero. So we want to find T initial going to be this length. How long does it take to go seven meters initially? All right, so this is a tricky problem. Um, so we have to use all our tools. Solve for t, you know why not? Probably try equation four again. Seven, eight. Solve for time, b naught is 15. Initial position is zero. So, say 2.5 seconds to get up here. So, now we're going to take 
We know the velocity up here is zero. So we need to find the velocity here. So we're going to solve for v naught given. So we're going to use equation three. Equation three, final velocity is zero, because it'll be, if you're a ball up, it's going to be moving at zero speed at the peak of the parabola. 9.8, time is 2.5, initial velocity, so that's what we're solving for, so v naught. So... Getting 24.5 meters per second here. Okay, so now this becomes our y naught. So now we're going to plug in equation 5 again. Sorry, equation 4. So displacement's how high you went. So we need to find how high we went first, actually. So we need to solve for x. We're going to use 4. We're going to solve. We're solving for this y. Solving for how high it went. So, putting an x, which is y in this case, time is 2.25. Not sure if that's the right way to do it. Um, looking for y we should probably use equation five okay b is zero negative nine point eight placement that's what we're solving for that's our x initial position is seven Velocity, that's what we just calculated, 24.5. So we're getting a height of 37.6 meters. Okay, so now we want to find the time it's in here. This is our final answer. Time is, is this amount. Okay, so now we're going to do equation 4. So we will go up 37.6, 9.8. Time is that we're solving for. Initial velocity is 24.5. Initial position is 7 meters high. So we're getting about... We don't need this, but final answer. Two point six seconds. So that's a lot to put together. We can we can throw it in the second opinion. I'm about I'm about forty percent confident, maybe thirty percent. Um, especially you, you just want to, the thing's not the greatest at so it's getting one point five seconds. Um
right. So let's move on. Kangaroo can jump over an object. So it's going to be our Y. Consider it's considering just its vertical motion. Okay, so we know gravity is 0 0.8. Y not is zero. B not zero. So we're gonna find V and the difference between velocity and speed is velocity is the absolute value of sp speed is the absolute value of velocity. So we're gonna find that. And then given that we're gonna find T for how long it's in the air. Okay, so we're gonna use equation five. B. 9.8.5 0 0 okay, so we're getting a complex number okay, let's see if we get a better answer let me do this we're just doing 9.8. This gives us 7. So. We really shouldn't know when exactly gravity's negative. So. So we need to get a consistent frame of reference. Maybe this answers it. So I see people arguing about the frame of reference. Um, Find just a simple answer, but they're not. I mean, this this is pretty this is pretty simple, I guess. But looking for something more simple. Uh, trying to find what what's the convention. Mm 
and things don't fall up. Things don't fall up, gravity be negative. Again, it's just a frame of reference. Um, Okay, so this is probably the best answer. So for free fall problems, that's essentially what we're, um, I don't know, because when you throw a ball up, it's only free falling. Let's say this is a X, Y axis. And this is quadrant one, this is quadrant two. So, it's really only free falling in quadrant one. Quadrant two, it's it's either free falling. I guess you could put T as well. Like this could just be T. Um, you say it's falling down backwards in time. Time that doesn't that doesn't make sense. Like, doesn't make sense to have a negative time either. So, throwing the ball up in a parabola. It's only free falling on this half. This half is getting thrown up. So, wouldn't this be negative g and then positive g? That's what, that's the confusion I'm trying to settle. Okay, so if that's the case, B, B is here, so that's anything at the top is V not is is V zero because it's it's not moving so we can rewrite it we can rewrite it into parts say why not is zero why is 2.5 gravity is positive I'm sorry gravity is negative V naught is zero, V zero, solve for time. Okay, so we could we could try that, and then we could also try the opposite, where Y or Y naught is 2.5, our final Y, so we're gonna switch these. Gravity is positive. V naught is zero. V is zero. Solving for T. And then you sum the T's. So that's going to give us our answer. So Probably that. Let's see if that makes sense. I mean, that's a lot more work. So we're solving for T. So we're going to use equation 4. 2.5. So we need positive 9.8 times T. Velocity 0. Position 0. So we're getting... 
0.7 seconds. And then when we do the other way, so displacement is zero, negative 9.8, time is T, initial velocity is zero, initial position is 2.5. And then we're going to get the same answer. So that's kind of cool. We can switch the variables. We get the same answer. So the final answer should be 1.4 seconds. Now, I wonder... I wonder how we can just make this into one problem I don't know. I'm not seeing a way, but this does make this does make sense. Like you're going up, gravity is pulling down. Um, so gravity's slowing the ball as it goes up. Then it comes down. It's being increased by gravity. So I'm trying to think if this was. This was centered if this was centered on the x y axis if that would if if that would make more sense but i don't i don't think so so we're just gonna move on i don't wanna overthink it so seventy six base of a cliff so we're standing here. So here's a rock fall loose from 105 meters. <clears throat> so I'm guessing it's a rock falling at 15 meters. So that's gonna be why not it is 105 meters. Here's a rock break loose from a height. So he doesn't see it until 1.5. Okay, so T initial is unknown, but T final when he sees it is 1.5 seconds. So we wanna find Y. How far above the hiker is a rock Y at T F. Okay. okay. And then we want T's his head. Doesn't say how tall he is. So we're going to say let's say he's 1.8 meters tall. So let's just answer the first question before we move on. So rocks falling Rock is falling, doesn't see it till this point. Okay.
Here's our rock. Rock's falling. He hears it. So he hears it here. Okay. Hears and then sees it here. So how far above the hiker is the rock? How far above? So what's the height above this guy? What you can hear. So we want to know this height. And we're going to say... We're going to say this is Y. Okay, so this, let's say this is Y1. And then let's say Y0 is when it Hears it, so we're gonna, we're really solving for why not, but we have um it's kind of let's say why one is what we're solving for. That's when he hears it. So we're solving for why one. So we want to find why so 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 why one. It's going to be one of our equations. I just want to make sure we have all the all the knowns written down. Gravity, in this case, is going to be positive. Let me ask the chatbot if a parabola. To separate the problem into positive, negative gravity. We don't need to separate problem positive negatives. Um, when it's, I know the book, I know the book describes it. Let me pull up my copy of the book. I know the book talks about it. Got twenty five minutes. I don't know when it's graphed. Okay. Note that whether acceleration A is G or negative G depends on how we define. If we define upward direction as positive, okay, so if this is T and this is Y. So this is coordinate one, so it means y is 
positive in this direction, then we're going to use negative gravity. Um, that is positive. So like this is just oh uh, this is confusing. Like it's it's like a Y but it's like going positive direction down. So we're in the positive direction up, so that would be positive directions up. Then we're gonna use negative gravity. Okay, so I, uh, maybe it's just like a, like a preference thing. Like maybe some people think better in one frame of reference than another. So I guess that's just gonna be how I do it. Um, so seventy six. We want to know how far above the hiker is the rock when he hears it. Okay, so let's see if we can. I uh, close my notebook. Okay, so we're finding Y, so we're going to use F4. So our final Y. 1.8 acceleration negative 9.8 time what is time they gave us Time is, is here. Okay, so we don't have enough we don't have enough time variables to follow this. Hundred and five meters, that's when he that's the moment the rock falls. So let's just let's restart this. We wanted to solve for T, but we don't have we need we need T naught before we can solve this. We need to find that T.
So we know X. Do we know when he sees it? I want to find a displacement here. And we want to find T for here. Okay, let's let's just restart the whole problem. And let's get a let's just start with a second opinion. Okay, so that's kind of annoying. Assuming the speed of sound. Um, so that's kind of like, it's like, okay, you can't like, yeah, I guess that works, but it's like not what I was expecting. Okay, so, you know, why not is 105. We need to find the distance the rock has fallen in t seconds. Okay, but where do you put the one? Where's where's the one hundred and five meters go? Doesn't even use one hundred five meters. Doesn't even use the initial time, initial height. That's kind of weird. How does the rock go four hundred meters? when it was initially 105 meters. So this is not good. It's not a good way to do that. Okay, so let's rethink our problem. This is our rock. Rocks falling. Let's make a bigger picture. Okay, so. This is why not. Okay. I go here's a rock break loose from height of 105 meters. <clears throat> Can't see the rock. How far above the hiker is the rock when he can hear it?
far above the hiker is the rock when he can hear it. So let's say this is when he hears it. This is when he sees it. So we want to know how far. So we want to know the, dis the displacement between, let's call this Y1 Y2. And then this would be Y. Okay, so they want to know how far above the hiker is a rock when he hears it. So we want to know this amount. So this is our A question. So how, what, what's the length of that? So we know I like to think in uh, this way. Let me ask in quadrant one is gravity always Y axis upwards. So let's use, let's use negative gravity. So A is negative gravity. So we're finding, finding Y. So T is, so this is T. T is when he hears it, that's 1.5 seconds. All right, so would it help if we found average velocity? We don't really know any velocities yet. So that would probably help be to solve for some kind of velocity. Um, I think it's distance times time. I mean, should, I should know this, but. So maybe we're thinking change of position. Let's say this is 1.8 meters. 
So. Not going to be able to do that. So the, this is a very hard problem. Let me try a different. Try a different image model. So both are insisting on the speed of sound. Does it make sense? Um, Okay, saying, saying we can find this distance with speed of sound. So speed of sound, that's like saying our velocity is 343 meters per second. Okay, so we want to find... Okay. Maybe we can use that... So I mean, that does make sense. We we need a velocity somewhere. So if we're saying v naught is, what we say v naught is three forty three. Again, we're trying to find a displacement. Trying to find the height of the rock at this moment. So we're going to probably use this. X naught. It's 105. Okay. It's really crutching on distance is speed. Speed times time. So the distance. Is the distance here or here? Velocity of the of the sound. Thinking it's Y one. OK. 
Okay. So let's try that. Equation four. Start at 105, negative 9.8, time is 1.5, initial velocity 3.3, initial position is V naught, so we're solving, why not, I get 3.3, it just doesn't make sense, alright, I'm gonna humbly give up on this one. So let's move on to 50 meter cliff. Boulder breaks loose from the top. So why not is 250. Gravity is Acceleration is negative, negative gravity. So we're going to find, we're going to find Y. We want to find V. Assuming a reaction time. Okay, so we're gonna say V naught is zero. So it's starting here. It's not moving. Then it moves. 250 meters high, negative gravity. You know, you know we already know why is that Oh, okay. So Y is going to be zero because we're going to hit the ground. So we're going to find V. So this one I think we can do. Okay, so we're going to do four. So displacement Y is zero. Negative 9.8. Time. Don't know time. It's a problem. Equation five. Final velocity is what we're solving for negative nine point eight. Displacement zero. Initial position is two fifty. Initial velocity zero. Seventy meters per second. So we're saying it's hitting the ground at seven seventy meters per second. How long will tourists at the bottom have the other way after hearing the sound of the rock breaking loose? Okay, so I think we're gonna be comparing. So assuming it's 340 meters per second sound. Okay, so I think we're 330, 335. Alright, 335. Okay, so I think we're going to be plugging all of this in. It's going to be all the same except for swapping the Vs. So we're going to use equation 4, displacement. Negative nine point eight times is what we're solving for. Initial velocity is zero. Initial position two fifty. So 
final let's see, try equation three final velocity 335 E initial velocity zero. E can't be negative. That doesn't make sense. So yeah, I'm gonna end it here. Kind of a really tough video. So not sure. Not sure what we can do better next time. I'll have to sleep on it. So thanks for hanging out. I'll see you.